we will talk about vehicle aerodynamics uh, <coughs> uh, today so um, in vehicle aerodynamics uh, what we uh, <coughs> will be doing is uh, i will uh, share with you uh, what we are doing um, <coughs> there will be an uh, introduction so in the introduction what uh, so in this lecture uh, what i'm saying is um, so the this part of the module uh, is worth uh, about one quarter of the uh, module uh, uh, that is six weeks of teaching um, so the te teaching structure will be six weeks of uh, teaching uh, uh, lectures plus uh, exercises so that's a lectorial session and uh, we do we solve some problems in class and uh, you will have two exam questions from this section in the summer and uh, uh, we will be doing a revision class as well so um, i will uh, add the revision into the, this session as well um, so the exam choices uh, we will uh, notify you the exam uh, choices later so uh, as i said slide slides will contain all the uh, important theory and workings are done in the class uh, um, and you will have to do uh, some homework at home uh, so you will you will be given the um, answers uh, and the questions both um, so you uh, this is a level three module so uh, you are expected to do some of your own work too so in the uh, in this section uh, uh, there are as i said uh, six lectures so uh, the first lecture will be uh, an introduction to the uh, material introduction to the uh, subject area <coughs> and then um, we will talk about the uh, basics of aerodynamics in the second uh, lecture so um, that is uh, uh, that includes uh, flow over an aerofoil um, we'll talk about angle of attack we talk about lift drag uh, performance uh, and the velocity velocity effect of velocity as well and then uh, <clears throat> in the third lecture we will focus on an aerofoil of car or uh, um, a car as an aerofoil basically so uh, we will uh, look at uh, post movement effects uh, and coefficients uh, so effect of uh, lift and drag uh, pitching uh, we will talk about pitching movement um, as well as uh, aerodynamic center and center of pressure um, they are different to center of gravity, so uh, we will talk about uh, those as well. Uh, and then uh, we will talk about wind tunnel testing, uh, design and operation, um, so how uh, data acquisition is done uh, using wind tunnels, um, and differences between high speed and low speed wind tunnels. Then uh, we will look at uh, vehicle ground effect and stability uh, in the fifth lecture. Uh, so uh, for that, we will talk about uh, Wheel drag, wood is just wood, uh, wood if generation, um, center of uh, gravity, effect of aerodynamic forces, and uh, steady, uh, steadiness and uh, stability, or, or what we call the static margin. Um, and uh, the, in the sixth uh, week will be uh, revision. So uh, to start with, so. Uh, Airflow uh, of a moving vehicle can be uh, classified into four uh, main areas. So the first one is uh, flow around the vehicle. So um, if that is your vehicle, so there, there, there will be flow around the vehicle. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, some of the flow, so if the vehicle is moving in this direction, uh, some of the air will move through the um, body of the vehicle. So, uh, so there is flow around it, flow through it, uh, and uh, then also uh, we uh, look at flow uh, th there is a there is flow around the machinery basically flow around the uh, engine but uh, in this section we are not going to cover that uh, and also there is a inside body or interior cabin uh, ventilation uh, so uh, and airflow so we are not going to look at that e look at that either so we will be uh, mainly uh, concerned about flow around the vehicle so uh, these flows uh, have, uh, have an effect on the stability and performance of the vehicle 
stability and performance of the vehicle and uh, uh, <coughs> you, you need to uh, so uh, th then um, we look at the uh, flow field in detail uh, and then also uh, you have to look at engine cooling uh, or heating uh, and uh, heating and ventilation uh, inside the cabin so these are the four areas we are looking at uh, we are not looking at all the four areas but these are the four areas in uh, vehicle aerodynamics uh, so what is uh, why why is um, aerodynamics uh, important so um, there are there are two types of drag forces so drag forces means uh, is vehicle is uh, moving in that direction so there are, there are two types of drags one is the uh, resistance drag or the uh, wheel drag um, so from the road resistance so and the other one is the air resistance on the vehicle so air, air resistance is the one that we are looking at in this module uh, so um, these drag forces have an effect on the uh, performance of the vehicle so uh, basically drag forces uh, increase with the speed of the vehicle uh, and uh, they have an effect on the vehicle performance. Uh, that means uh, it has an effect on the fuel consumption as well. So uh, the higher the fo drag forces, the higher the fuel con consumption. Uh, so you compare uh, drag forces on one vehicle uh, to the other uh, using uh, not using the total drag force but using what you called a the drag coefficient because the drag coefficient uh, is a coefficient uh, depending on the size uh, and shape of the vehicle so um, otherwise if you if you just look at the force only uh, so that that is not a proper that is not a properly representative measure of uh, how how good the vehicle is how good the vehicle performance is um drag is actually as uh, important as the uh, engine power or, or even may uh, even uh, uh, even more right so um main aerodynamic forces on a on a car uh, so uh, <clears throat> you, you you have the uh, atmospheric pressure uh, which is a positive pressure and if the vehicle is moving in that direction in, uh, towards the front, so uh, that's that's your direction of most motion, and your drag resistance is is on on, on the opposite uh, direction, and there is a uh, an up thrust to the on, on the vehicle, and uh, there is a force. There are forces uh, keeping the vehicle down, which are called down forces created by uh, the aerodynamic forces. So uh, a fast when, when the when the car is uh, moving faster due to Bernoulli's equation, you can see that uh, uh, the higher the air uh, velocity he, here, the uh, higher the negative pressure here. Higher the negative pressure means the lower the pressure it is. And uh, then uh, you you have uh, <clears throat> when the uh, vehicle is moving slow, uh, so there's a there's a change in pressure. So uh, when the uh, so the negative pressure here uh, is uh, uh, increasing, uh, the not the negative value, the pressure dec decreases here, <coughs> or, or increases in the absolute scale. Okay, so um, if you look at uh, the forces, uh, so that your thrust should be in the direction of motion then you have drag on the other on the other direction and a down force uh, towards the from the top to the um, ground um, and uh, drag there are two types of uh, there, there's a drag force at the front as well as a drag force at back uh, lift is uh, created by the negative pressure uh, here so uh, that's that's the lift And then uh, we will look at uh, the effect of, of, of drag and lift. So, so perf performance uh, is uh, hindered or, or affected by <coughs> <coughs> drag and lift. Performance is affected by drag and lift.
So uh, <clears throat> performance uh, uh, effects are drag and lift, uh, basically. Uh, so because of uh, drag, uh, your speed reduces. Uh, and because of lift, um, your road resistance actually um, drops a little. So that can increase uh, the speed. Um, and then <clears throat> maneuver maneuverability is um, affected by aerodynamics so uh, these are uh, this is affected by the drag lift and crosswind uh, all three uh, elements uh, so crosswind is something like that so uh, a wind that is a uh, wind force that is coming onto this uh, onto the on coming from a side of the vehicle um, <clears throat> and then um, it is uh, it uh, affects uh, the comfort as well so uh, if when there's a crosswind, uh, you you can have uh, instability of the instability of the vehicle, uh, and um, it can the um, wind can make noise in the vehicle, uh, and um, it also um, have an uh, effect on uh, spray uh, uh, onto the vehicle and uh, so soiling. So you must have seen some of the cars, some of us, especially hatchbacks, um, and. Uh, SUVs, uh, you, you must have seen um, a lot of uh, the rear um, windshield uh, covered with uh, dirt and mud. Uh, that is, uh, so that that is all uh, uh, affected by the aerodynamics around the body of the car. And uh, a crosswind can overturn a car or, or uh, it can uh, sidestep a car as well. Uh, when, when you have really, really heavy crosswinds. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, <coughs> new uh, manufacturers like Mercedes, uh, they have crosswind uh, assist. Uh, that means there are methods uh, to uh, eliminate or uh, mitigate the effects of uh, crosswinds. And then uh, when you look at the flow around a vehicle, uh, you can't see it basically. Um, but uh, <clears throat> to see to see it, uh, you need to have some assistance. Uh, for example, you can see that in a <clears throat> wind tunnel or on a rainy day uh, with the rain droplets, you can see what uh, where the where the eye is moving. Uh, if, uh, but normally, you can't see it. Uh, <clears throat> You can use use a uh, uh, wind tunnel to uh, have uh, visualization it with, to look at it with the visualization techniques. Uh, <clears throat> mainly uh, for drag uh, performance, uh, 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 is determined by the force, uh, the aerodynamic force uh, to the front on on the front of the vehicle uh, and um, at the uh, rear of the vehicle. So that's that's the front, that's the rear. So uh, in the front, you uh, so if you take the uh, vehicle as an aerodynamic body, so there is flow separation in the front, and then uh, at the back uh, you you have what you call a wake. So uh, this is for a streamlined body, and this is for a bluff or a blunt body. Uh, so the wake of a blunt bluff body is uh, uh, wider. Uh, it has a um, so uh, always a, a wake has a negative pressure here. That means. Uh, if you have a large area here, you will have a large negative pressure, uh, meaning that's a drag again as well. Uh, so um, <clears throat> you need to, uh, now this is a, here you have a positive pressure, air coming onto the vehicle, uh, creating a pressure, the, the, the pressure here is positive. So that accounts for drag uh, front in the front. Uh, and uh, when you have negative pressure here, uh, then, that also accounts for a drag because uh, that will drag into in the vehicle in the, to the back, right? So um, aerodynamic drag is uh, uh, the relative uh, due to the relative movement of the um, of air uh, relative to the car. So uh, that so. Um, that can happen in three ways. So there is there can be stationary and the moving car. So that is normally what happens. And moving uh, 
moving uh, they, they can be moving yeah and station requires well i mean that is uh, that is for a park to come and uh, during a wind and then uh, in normal life situations you have, will have a moving car and uh, winds as well that means moving air on the road so one and three here now this is a moving car with wind and this is without wind and uh, um, so the, um, usually the forces are uh, the drag force is roughly uh, proportional to the square of the velocity so uh, uh, drug force is uh, roughly pr proportional to the square of uh, velocity. Um, and uh, if you have a larger projected frontal area, so now if, the, if, this, if this is a car, this, this, this has a smaller frontal area, but normally a car has a larger frontal area like that. Okay? So, so that area uh, determines the drug force as well. And um, then the, at atmospheric pressure, uh, or, or the um, density of the atmosphere should be included in the equation and, and uh, uh, <clears throat> coefficient of uh, uh, shape, uh, vehicle, vehicle shape, ref reflecting vehicle shape. So finally, we come to an equation for the drag force as CD A rho over 2 V squared, rather CD A rho V squared over 2. So that would be, uh, the, so CD is called the drag coefficient. Uh, so this is an indicator of aerodynamic design of the vehicle. So this is vehicle specific. So area is also vehicle specific. Rho is the um, medium. It, it's medium specific in the air, and V is the vehicle speed. At, uh, so for example, a medium size car driving at 100 uh, kilometers per hour, um, the aerodynamic track typically counts for 75 to 80 percent. Of the total resistance on the car, so that's much higher than the uh, um, road re road resistance okay, at that speed. And then um, we, we we can look at uh, the cabin flow. Uh, sufficient ventilation must must be ensured. Uh, of fresh air coming in uh, uh, and flushing out of uh, dirty air, so that is cabin ventilation. So that is uh, also dependent on uh, or affected by aerodynamics uh, inside the cabin air movement. Uh, so to maintain uh, the wind, uh, internal air temperature, you have ventilation inside and uh, you have heaters or coolers. Uh, so uh, um, you, you, have, you blow cold air in the summer and uh, you blow hot air in the winter um, to into the cabin. So uh, the distribution of that air is dependent upon uh, the aerodynamics inside. And then you also have uh, humidity control in the sense uh, you have demisting, de-icing, um, and you have air curtains in uh, luxury cars as well, uh, so that you won't feel uh, the uh, uh, cold outside uh, temperature. So when, um, in, in luxury cars, you must have felt that even if you touch the glass, you don't feel uh, the glass is uh, cold. So you, you uh, so that is because uh, you have an air curtain uh, just by that. So um, the objectives of objectives of uh, improving aerodynamics uh, are like threefold. One is uh, it includes it improves fuel consumption. So that means uh, you will have less fuel consumption if you have uh, better aerodynamic um, performance, and then. Uh, it will have a better uh, favorable comfort characteristics than in the car has good aerodynamic performance. And uh, it also uh, uh, improves driving characteristics as well. Uh, so stability and handling and traffic safety, they, they, they are all dependent on uh, how uh, the car drives. So um, the handling of the car uh, is uh, dependent upon uh, the um, aerodynamics. Then we will uh, look at uh, the, a brief uh, history of uh, um, aerodynamics. So uh, in the picture, you see um, um, an old uh, or, or uh, quite old in the 1900s, uh, how, how a car would uh, 
uh, be shaped. So this is uh, um, not exactly 1900 later than that, uh, but um, so <clears throat> they knew about uh, the aerofoil shape. Uh, so uh, an aerofoil will have the least uh, amount of uh, drags. Uh, forces, uh, so therefore they they wanted to make a car uh, in the shape of an aerofoil. So uh, <clears throat> a bluff body will, uh, on the other hand, uh, have have a lot of uh, have big uh, uh, resistance or um, aerodynamic drag on it. So uh, when you have a bluff body, uh, wakes and um, flow separations cannot be avoided, and um, integrated uh, shape. Um, that means uh, you have uh, pieces of uh, aerodynamic uh, shape pieces uh, amalgamated together so that will make uh, uh, an integrated shape for example um, those days you had cars and you have aerodynamic shaped cars aerodynamic shaped wing mirrors aerodynamic shape dynamically shaped uh, uh, lights and so on so everything was aerodynamically shaped uh, and they integrated them together so that it, it they they would have a less uh, aerodynamic resistance. Yes, uh, <clears throat> and also uh, the ground clearance uh, would also uh, play a part on uh, aerodynamics uh, as well as car to car clearance. So the distance between between cars uh, plays a part in uh, aerodynamics. That is because that relative velocity. So um, <clears throat> we look at three eras. Uh, one is from uh, 1900 to 1920, and then 1920 to 1970, and 19, uh, rather 1970 19, uh, uh, to 1990, and, uh, 19, uh, 70 to 1990 and uh, uh, afterwards. So uh, these are <clears throat> these are some examples from 1900s. Really. So the Alfa Romeo had something called a, a aerodynamica. So this is a 1912, 1914 uh, design. So uh, it had a basically a, a um, aerodynamic uh, shape, uh, and then uh, there was a there was an electric uh, land speed record uh, holder car or the land speed record braking car. This is a, this is an electric car, so it had a torpedo shape of a torpedo. <clears throat> uh, so um, it um, reached 106 kilometers per hour in um, 19, uh, 1899. And uh, then um, they, they uh, created, uh, they, they had a car, uh, this is an Audi actually in um, 1913. Uh, it had a uh, boat uh, tail uh, shape at the, uh, at the back. And this was, this was a flop basically, it, it didn't uh, perform well. Okay, and then uh, when you look at uh, uh, the era from 1920 to 1970, uh, streamlined body uh, was, um, in favor so uh, and two streamlined bodies uh, welded together uh, would give uh, the ultimate shape they, they thought and uh, this is something like this okay so uh, the cars those days had a shape uh, <coughs> that has a relationship to uh, this this shape um this one here so you can see the you can you can see see the um, Two streamlined bodies like one and two. The, all these cars, yes. Uh, right, sorry. Uh, by um, now, when they uh, did testing testing on on these shapes, so it it gave a scale down model showed a 0 0.244 um, um, coefficient uh, drag coefficient, which is which is a very good value, and a large wind when you when they <laughs> tested in uh, large wind tunnels um, they got a got an actual uh, cd of 0 0.36 which is still a good value uh, so um <clears throat> the the uh, cds uh, would change depending on on whether it's a model or a scale a scale down model or a um, real one real size one okay so no normally what we do is um, in wind tunnels, we uh, test uh, scale down models. And if you look at this car, you, you can see that um, the uh, to reduce uh, drag, um, it has a um, wheel cover 
uh, as well here yeah. um, and it has uh, so you know the streamlines are going uh, along the body of the car so uh, the, these these would direct these uh, perforations would direct the uh, flow uh, in the longitudinal dire direction yes um, and then uh, from 19 um, 70 to 1990 period um cars uh, <clears throat> took uh, cars changed from a boxy shape to a very more streamlined shape uh, in in the body itself uh, so um, one of the uh, main changes uh, was uh, the introduction of the ford thunderbird so uh, ford uh started this revolution with the ford sierra actually um, um in the in the 1980s uh, ford sierra came in 1983 so, uh, somewhere there so it had a more rounded shape than the previous uh, generation cars um namely ford caprice ford coordinates etc and <clears throat> then uh, um, in 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 the us uh, they designed the ford uh, Thunderbird with a with a much more streamlined shape, and that uh, went across the, uh, the across their model range, uh, uh, and uh, their cars were more streamlined. So uh, then, if you look at the cars in the nineteen nineties, um, uh, all the Japanese cars had, uh, also uh, got uh, streamlined shapes. So uh, now. <laughs> So um, the downforce, uh, uh, though, uh, uh, will uh, Im increase the um, resistance. So uh, when 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 the car is designed with downforce, uh, uh, you could see uh, that in, uh, from the 1970s onwards, uh, the car performance uh, improved drastically when they looked at downforce in racing cars. Mm, and um, this has uh, two two examples. Um, this this is uh, I think Taunus uh, Toyota Taunus. Um, this one uh, shows you uh, when you have a rounded nose how uh, drag uh, reduces. So now this is the drag coefficient uh, and the radius of chamfer. So chamfered shape uh, has a drag coefficient. Uh, so with with this radius. Uh, uh, lower drag coefficient and this shape has a rounded shape has a <clears throat> you you can go go for a uh, higher radius here higher chamfer radius here okay. so um in 99 from 1990 onwards they uh, looked at the basic form of the car so uh, all the cars were designed uh, in a aerodynamic uh, shape so um, aerodynamic uh, uh, design uh, was prominent and uh, then they did internal testing and cfd analysis and uh, integration uh, then then uh, they integrated uh, things and uh, looked at the trade trade off that they could get, uh, get. Uh, so here we look at the drag co how, how the drag coefficients um, improved uh, uh, over the years so this is uh, where here we look at a 1920s 1990 1920s car where the drag coefficient was like 0 0.7 0 0.8 uh, and uh, in the 1930s 40s uh, it uh, came down to like say 0 0.6 and in 60s 70s it came down to about, about around 0 0.4 0 0.5 between 0 0.4 and 5 and no nowadays you will have you you have uh, Commercially sold cars with drug coefficients less than 0.3 most of the time. Okay, um, so the, so this is for for example um, a Jaguar um, F Pace, uh, and uh, this is a uh, this this is CFD uh, uh, results of uh, how they are, would move around the car, and. Uh, <clears throat> So the, these are this 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 is the best uh, coefficients that you can get. Uh, for example, 
so these are different shapes uh, where, where it gives you uh, different uh, drug coefficients. And uh, then uh, we want to look at uh, the difference between the streamlined bodies and bluff bodies. A uh, streamlined body would give you so they 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 are characterized by attached flow. Basically, the flow is attached to the streamlined body. So um, um, for forces, uh, drag drag forces are pressure induced. Basically, so um, yeah, in here you you have a pressure induced uh, drag drag force, and but that is uh, small. Uh, so drag is mainly caused by the shear stress. Shear stress means uh, the the stress around here. Right, uh, so that is uh, the uh, so in the streamlined body, you you will have uh, shear forces, not uh, pressure forces, mainly. Okay, and for bluff bodies, the bluff bodies, the frontal area is large, therefore you have a larger uh, larger pressure force, uh, um, and uh, but and for for this reason, the CD of these uh, this is uh, larger. Um, and uh, there isn't much uh, shear forces here. So here, direct force, uh, direct force mostly. There, shear force mostly. Okay. So you need to look at um, here. Sorry. You need to look at this one. You need to understand this properly. How to reduce. Uh, uh, to un understand how to reduce drag. Okay. Um, so how you do that is uh, re to reduce drag. Um, you need to uh, reduce the fore body drag and the uh, aft body drag. So uh, so we will uh, talk about that in in a minute. So we will look at um, reduction of drag. Um, so it, it is um, divided into reduction of the fore body drag. Fore body drag is the drag in the front. Then the reduction of aft body drag, that is the reduction of uh, the drag at the back and the uh, reduction of side wall drag. So um, if you look at these figures, you, you, you see it. So um, <clears throat> separation of the flow uh, causes a front, uh, the drag in the front uh, or the four body drag so um, and uh, you need to re re reduce the um, flow separation smooth you need to flow separation in the sense flow separation from the uh, from the wall okay. so you need a smooth flow over the over the wall um, so um, if you do that you will have a uh, less drag and because you, frontal area you can't do anything about it because frontal area or the total frontal area is the total frontal area because you can't just reduce the redu uh, shorten the size of the car um, um, so um, therefore you can't do that so only thing that you can do is you can uh, re reduce load separation uh, to reduce frontal or the four body drag and then to to reduce aft body drag or drag or, or the drag at the back you can uh, you can have a streamlined shape uh, going slightly longer uh, to the back so for, for example um if you if you have a if you have actually if you have boat tailing you can you can have a um, considerable drag reduction for example if you look at this one so now if you extend your tail a little bit you your area your effective area of the um, wake uh, is smaller like in here there uh, like like in here so uh, the, therefore you can um, <coughs> reduce the drag by doing that and uh, then uh, <coughs> side body drag uh, can be reduced by uh, shaping the vehicle so that you will uh, have effectively less uh, um, side side drag so uh, no protruding, protruding parts no frames uh, and uh, you uh, don't have uh, <coughs> you change the roughness uh, uh, of the uh, of the top of the car etc so doing all that you can reduce the drag uh, side uh, wall drag okay and uh, then uh, <coughs> If you look at uh, drag and power, so drag is given by the equation CD times A times uh, 
rho divided by 2 times uh, v squared. So here v is the velocity and a is the area, effective area. C is, CD is the drag coefficient and rho is the um, rho is the um, density. And power is given by CDA rho over 2 uh, times v to the power 3. Okay. So um, th now this graph gives you um, the drag uh, here and the power curve uh, for, uh, for example for a fourth gear of a, um, of a 90s car and a fifth gear um, here. So, uh, so that's the speed, that's the um, horsepower required, right? And uh, we'll see how we reduce the drag. So uh, to reduce the drag, uh, so drag is mainly given by this equation. As I, as we say, we can't uh, we can't change the environment, we can't change the frontal area, uh, and uh, we we can't change the speed either because uh, there are, there are regulations for speed and the speed at which you drive. So what you can do is uh, the only thing that you can do is reshape the vehicle. Or, or, um, uh, so to do that, you can do two two things. One one is that you can use wind tunnel experiments uh, to reduce drag, or you can do a CFD uh, computational fluid dynamic um, calculation and uh, use that use those results to reduce drag. So this this uh, figure shows you um, uh, now here this is for flow visualization in in a. Uh, in front, what you see is flow visualization in a wind tunnel, and at the rear, what you see is uh, the same visualization in using CFD. Yeah, so um, in here, um, you, you you can uh, see a night here um, uh, with um, a Mercedes car uh, with flow visualization here uh, with smoke. Right. So uh, this is uh, a courtesy of um, um, Volvo and KTH. Uh, so the, these are two wind tunnels. Uh, um, so the one is a scale model, one is a proper wind, uh, proper size one. So um, you you have a flat underbody of the full scale model, no side mirrors, no cooling flow, uh, and uh, <clears throat> these are, these are two experiments that they that they did. So uh, with that. Um, uh, so in the wind tunnel model, uh, they ra ran the car at 140 kilometers per hour and 180 kilometers per hour, uh, and uh, <laughs> they they uh, looked at uh, the uh, drag coefficient uh, for uh, uh, and and yaw angle uh, for for this one at those uh, speeds. And uh, for racing cars. Uh, you you only you don't you not only look at um, drag uh, you you also look at downforce because for racing cars for cornering you need a large down down uh, down forces um, and uh, in racing cars you you have uh, uh, now if if you if you have a smaller clear ground clearance you, you have a higher uh, you can have a higher higher down force basically. Um, so, uh, this this graph uh, shows shows you that, and, and normally of racing cars, uh, the drag forces are quite um, higher than uh, than normal day-to-day uh, -day cars. Okay, uh, remember that racing cars are not like not, not real streamlined bodies, where, because uh, in racing cars, what you are looking at is performance. Therefore. Uh, uh, drag is the drag is not the main concern. Uh, handling it, it, it is so um, you have uh, different uh, protruding uh, elements in a racing car like uh, the front wing, the side pod, uh, and the <coughs> side skirts uh, and uh, the rear spoiler as well. So um, that's that's a, you will learn about this uh, in more in detail uh, in the in the course. So uh, this lecture today give, gave you a, a quick introduction to what we, we, uh, we will learn uh, in the next few uh, weeks. So um, we looked at the importance of aerodynamics in modern vehicle design, and we looked at uh, key points. Uh, uh, key point is the drag reduction uh, via shape design, okay, design of the shape, and uh, then 
other factors to be included are comfort characteristics etc um, and you need to look use a comprehensive approach uh, design optimization via internal and, and cft so these are the things that we discussed today so uh, <clears throat> we will go over this uh, uh, on, on monday mm, and uh, you can ask uh, if there are any questions uh, at that time and we can have a, a discussion again Thank you for listening to uh, this uh, and I will see you uh, on Monday.